Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Top 8 of Pro Play Tour Las Vegas. I'm Alex Simo, joined by Mr. Joseph Rothschild. Sorry about the delay on that one. We had to do the deck checks for the Top 8. And uh, oh, there was actually a bit of an error on our Top 16. We've corrected it since. You might have seen it already. But one of the uh, Orcus decks, one of the 10 Orcus decks that made Top 16, was actually a 60-card pendulum <laughs> list. The best Orcus lists um, don't play Orcus, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, in fact, the format is not ruined. There were only nine out of 16 Orcists. Uh, one of them was um, Ivan on 60-card pendulum. Yeah, we, we featured him earlier today. Yeah, we featured Ivan earlier, uh, just putting on an absolute great show. Oh, yeah. And um, I... He's like the last like non-meta deck right now. Do we have the top eight breakdown? We actually do. Um, the top eight breakdown is four Orcus decks, one Machina Orcus, one Scrap Orcus, and two Lunalite Orcus, two Salaman Great Both decks. Both Salaman Greats converted, so yeah. that's interesting. Uh, one Thunder Dragon combo and one 60-card Pendulum. Which we've got for the feature match. So we're Get not excited. Yeah, I don't think we're going to make you guys wait any longer. I think we just want to go ahead and get into it. Uh, and without further ado... Here is your top eight feature match. This is exciting. I would really love to see uh, Ivan probably take this whole thing. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we are we are a little bit biased uh, against Orcist, basically. Um, but, uh, of course, I am always happy uh, to watch any good player play a combo deck. Looks like they're just waiting for our signal there. And uh, we've given it. Here we go. <laughs> Good handshake. Both these guys are so friendly. I had the uh, opportunity to just chat them up a bit while we were waiting for the deck checks to finish, and both just uh, just really good characters. And Ivan um, is exceptionally nice individual, um, but also exceptionally good at Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, when we had him on previously, uh, he really made Pendulum look incredibly broken. He ended on a board of sloth and friends. Uh, one thing to also mention, too, is that uh, these two played each other in Swiss. Oh, wow. They told me. So they already know How what the other person's out. playing. Uh, Isaiah barely won it because Ivan gave it to him. Oh. He was about to – he literally could have just had everything in defense mode but decided to commit to an Appaloosa oh, when no. Isaiah had a set Widow Anchor, oh. and that was the end of the game. That's awful. Yeah. So, um, But looks like Isaiah is going to be going first here, going to be doing uh, typical Orcus shenanigans. Leading with a mathematician. I've heard that's pretty good. Yeah, and this is what we've come to expect. Uh, one thing to note about Isaiah's deck in particular is that he is playing the uh, Machina Fortress. Yes. So uh, I guess this is technically like the Machina Orcus, if you want to call it that. But he's also playing the Sky Striker engine in addition to that. So uh, Machina Fortress is just a really solid card all around. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, of course, a uh, seven-star monster that you can uh, send eight stars worth of machines to the graveyard, a special summon, um, as uh, Orcist has transitioned to a deck that's playing things like Barricade Board Blocker, just because sending cards from your hand to the graveyard is so powerful. Uh, cards that plus you in the process are even better. Yeah, but it uh, looks like Isaiah's just going to be doing the typical Orcus shenanigans here. Nothing really... Uh, too crazy or out of the ordinary. Just needs to get a nice setup here. I mean, Orcus does a really good job of just, you know, getting its initial setup. And again, it's not the most intimidating board, but what it's able to do consistently over and over over the course of these long tournaments, it really starts to, you know, just show why it is the most dominant deck of the format. And uh, this is just probably the best setup you can go for. An IP Mascarena, um, a set card, a Babel, and uh, access to both a Dingirsu and a Galatea. And so, again, just ending on this very simple board, but this this one board can just do so much in oh and yeah. of itself. So Ivan's got a uh, long road ahead of him, but if there's any deck that can play through it, it's probably Pendulum. To those of you asking, are any Orcist players playing the Mirror? Uh, yes, they are. Um, though it is likely we'll see an Orcist in the finals, uh, it's a good deck and well represented in your top eight. Yeah, it was uh, interesting. A lot of the Orcists actually... Uh, took one another out in the in the top cut because there was just such a sheer volume of them. I think, uh, what, uh, five of them failed to convert? Yeah, I That's think so. Good. So it actually slashed in half going from top 16 to top 8. But understandably so. I mean, it's, again, if you have a pure representation, you're the only one is going to advance, but, you know, they both can't advance. All right, so here's the effect of uh, Dark Worm. That's going to get an area zero from deck. Isaiah just thumbing through the graveyard real quick. Still has interaction. So How do you feel about just going to combat here? Well, if you do that, you force the IP, which is kind of nice. 
And then, yeah, I mean, then, I mean, you don't get your battle phase, of course, but being able to just force IP means that you're only going to have to really deal with the Dengirsu at that point, which, as a Pendulum player, I think you'd be pretty okay with. But it looks like that's what Ivan's doing. Um, We're now going to see the activation of the Mascarena. What's the worst thing that could come out? Maybe a Nightmare? Uh, Trisbana's pretty Trisbania strong. Trisbania sounds pretty good, actually, because then if Ivan attempts to summon Scales, then we could actually just uh, trigger Trisbania and make it really difficult for Ivan to progress. It's very difficult uh, against Pendulum to end on a board that can interact profitably with the Scales. So going for Long Gear Sue here, this is really interesting because this has actually given Ivan a bunch of uh, arrows yeah, I don't for know how much I like this. I don't know how much I like it either. I think the idea is you're able to uh, effectively send, you know, for example, uh, anything that is under the Electromite, but that's one send. Right. And it enables a Pendulum Summon of about six. So here comes Master Cerberus going to the scale. It's going to pop itself. Mm-hmm. One of the most vulnerable points of Pendulum decks, I should <laughs> <For> say. <sure. laughs> if that gets ashed, good luck. Maybe not in the 60-card build, but a very... Uh, Standard variant, for sure, is not going to uh, bode too well. So we're going to go ahead and grab... uh, Looked like to be that uh, Master Cerber, or excuse me, the uh, Jackal Jackal King, King, yes. And Jackal King turns back into Master. Now, Master's effect might actually come in handy here. Potentially. That Long Gearsu is not linked yet. Correct. Ooh. Does Isaiah have something? No, looks like he's going to let it go. All right, that's two. <laughs> Chat thinks they have the read on that set card being a crescendo. I don't know about that. I, it makes sense why he'd make Long Gear Sue. That does kind of... Ooh. So there's Providence. And Providence is going to, uh, of course, add a likely Oracle. That's going to put counters on Master Cerberus, though, which is what uh, Ivan's going to attempt to just boost up this uh, Cerberus to be able to force the uh, Long Gear Suit to get banished, or force the Crescendo, for that matter. Right. (coughs) Wow, there's like four spell cards in the hand for Ivan. Just an incredibly powerful hand. That's four tokens on the Master Cerberus. And that's enough to trigger the effect. So, I mean, you got to be feeling pretty good. Time to start thinking. So, there's Zephrath. Now, Zephrath is incredibly good, both as a scale and a way to search Zephyr Nui. With those extra zones, the extra deck is unlocked, but I don't know how long he's going to have them. If he aims to shoot for the uh, Long Gearsu here, predicting a face down crescendo, then uh, we'll likely see an activation. And it looks like we're going to, so he's going to target it. He's going to banish the Long Gearsu, so. That's pretty strong. So, no force out of crescendo here. Now, the thing is, Isaiah could, if that is a crescendo, Isaiah could still potentially banish Skeleton, bring back Galatea, and then use crescendo, but that's basically the same thing as going for Ding Gearsu. Are we close to lethal? That Master Serve is huge. All we need the Pendulum Summon for is like maybe one monster. 28, 18 is uh, 46, so we're only 34 off, and Pendulum, is that's not hard to assemble that much damage. Well, Master Serve gains the attack of the monster it banishes, right? Oh, did it? So, okay. Uh, as so as a result, it'll be uh, what, like 56? 5,300? 53 and 18 is 71? Do we have to Pendulum Summon one monster to finish this up? Possibly. Here comes Desires. If there's going to be a way to get scales and monsters, that'll be it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Looking at his opponent, do you have a response? Because if not, uh, you are in for it. But, I mean, he still has a simple skeleton, though. So, I mean, it's not exactly lethal. Uh, to yeah. those of you saying he battled already, um, no, declaring battle phase and then chaining the effect of uh, IP Mascarena means that you are still in the main phase. Correct, because you have to use IP Mascarena in main phase, and if you don't agree to proceed to the next phase, then you're still in the one that you are currently in. Yeah, so this would be lethal, but again, Dengirsu is the problem here. Yeah. So that's the only thing preventing him from uh, getting to that. However... If he has a way to like pendulum summon like Jackal yeah, and then be able to. Whoa, is that a. That's a magical, <laughs> magical abductor. abductor. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, and we saw that his hand had so many spells in it. I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility. We'll see it activated. It's very possible. And not, not to mention, like I said, if he can just stick a Jackal King, Jackal King can negate the symbol skeleton, and then this game will just be wrapped up instantly. All right, so... <laughs> uh, not bad look out of uh, Ivan. So here comes a Zephrath that's going to tick up the Magical Abductor to two counters. And looking at the uh, face down banished pile real quick, uh, how many Zephyr Nui do I have? That also ticks Master Service up to eight. Wow, that's frightening. That card is never being destroyed unless it's being used as link material. Will we see an activation of Zephrath? It's tough because you have to fix your scale. It shouldn't be too difficult. Now we're talking real quick about how Master Cerberus works. What do you think the set is? I don't hate Cosmic. I think that might be uh, reasonable. I don't hate uh, Infip, uh, but it'd be really late to activate there it. There were some players playing Compulse this weekend in Orcus as well. So Feels like you'd Compulse the uh, Master Cerberus. Just to protect, possibly. All right, here comes the Bing Gearsu. Here's the activation. He's going to attach. Ooh. Interesting. So he's going to try to wall up. Does he know something we don't? I like the idea behind impermanence, but it seems like you've let your opponent get away with a lot. That's what I feel like as well. Maybe he's saving it for the Electromite? He could just be really holding out for the Electromite, but... Oh, I don't man. If it is, that's a fantastic column for it. But if Ivan has a read on it as well, then maybe he just... Oh, okay, Ooh, well, that hand actually looks like it's got both the Desires and a Providence in it. Those are both hard ones per turn. So Ooh, oh, dice, dice go, go everywhere. Flying. Now, the thing is, if this is an Electromite, this is going to be very problematic for Ivan because then not only is that going to be negated, but then Zephrath gets negated too. Yeah, uh, that's like a best-case scenario for Isaiah. The thing is, though, there's mind games, right? Because right. even if you're not playing Imperm, you still should set it in that column for just sure. to make your opponent think that you're playing Imperm. There's okay. Electromite. <laughs> he puts it in the other one, uh, just so it's a little farther away from that column. Ooh, and chat's got it right. It is Drowning Mirror Force. Called is a pretty good read. There's nothing really good to like call in this deck aside from Dark Worm, but he normal summoned it. Right. So, but uh, the fact that he's letting Electromite resolve, let that 100% confirms it's not Imper. Well, we have Isaiah's list. I suppose we could just actually look. That's the true. only trap card he's playing is Crescendo. He has one call by the grave. Yeah, so I think it's pretty likely that Shark Cannon could be another one. Could be a Shark Cannon. Could be a Cosmic Cyclone. Um, I feel like Widow Anchor would have already been used. Yeah. He is uh, playing Cyclone. He's playing two Cyclone. Yeah. Hmm. It's It's got to be one of those three. For sure. It's it's the one of Call by the Grave, the sh one Shark Cannon, or... So the Zephyrath activation is happening. Okay. Oh, and uh, Isaiah lets it resolve. That makes me think that it's not Cosmic Cyclone, because that's a pretty good time to stop it. But we have perfect information, though, too. So, yes, like, Ivan might not... Well, they did play prior, so he might know that Cosmic is in his deck, but... Uh, I think like if these players were playing the first time, it might be a little bit difficult to say. Electromite's going to pop the Oracle of Zephra. Oh, that's silly. I'm going to look at uh, the Electromite real quick. Uh, I don't think it actually has to pop a Pendulum. Nope. Doesn't get the draw, but well, he can get it other ways. In that case, it's fair. All right, here comes the summon. Well, we already know there's a Jackal King in Ivan's hand. It's just going to go for a big, meaty summon. Zephyr oh, so Zephyr knew he was in his hand Always already. part of it. Yep. Uh, no, uh, Zephyrath was activated. Oh, you're right. Excuse me. Harmonizing. Harmonizing. This is a big meaty summon. And Ooh, a Zephraxiton. So we're going to find out what that back row is pretty soon here. Well, maybe not. Uh, Zephraxiton, of course, does destroy. And there's a Dingirsu with uh, material. Are you really going to protect that back row, though? I don't know how good is it. I do Reading Zephraxiton real y quick. Yes. Yeah, you can stop it if you want. Zephraxiton has so much flexibility just being able to, like, add this level of utility to the deck that it usually doesn't have. Being able to just pop spells and traps, like, seems pretty good. I think you've got to have the read that it's called. I, I wouldn't be expecting anything else at this point. Yeah, and plus called's one of the most commonly played cards in the format, so, I mean, not really too much of a surprise. Mm-hmm. 
And he's he, going to protect it. Wow. What is it? I, I mean, I'm, I'm pouring over this list. What could it possibly be that it's that important? Oh, chat, he is playing one Drowning Mirror Force. <laughs> That's a lie. I'm, you are <laughs> such a liar. <laughs> I'm, I'm trolling. This is a... This is a pretty big board, though, that Ivan's assembling here. And there's the Divine Strike. Ivan should be able to have game this turn, because I'm fairly certain now Isaiah is out of uh, Orcist effects. All right, so looks like we're going to see what I believe to be a Link Summon. Oh, he's going <laughs> to... Whoa, 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 hey. No, nope, he's letting it go. Okay. He's out of Orcist effects. Can he still use Wand? No, because it's not a uh, Orcist monster. Oh, yeah. How broken do you think this deck is? Uh, I, I don't know. Have you seen it this weekend? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Nine out of 16. <laughs> At this point, you could just uh, play it on both players' turn without Babel, and I wouldn't stop you. <laughs> Engage for the bluff. I think he would have activated it. Going for the Metal <laughs> Metal Trial. Wow. That's a throwback. Yeah, we haven't seen that really since... Uh the Pendulum FDK, or like Pendulum in its like early forms. Yeah, Pendulum decks did play this as a way to uh, get extra zones from where Electromite summoned. Um, it was a fantastic way to link away, uh, for example, uh, Electromite plus um, Absolute Dragon. Absolute Dragon, yeah. yeah. And, and then, then you'd, you'd have a free zone. Vortex as well. No Sky Striker. What Yu Gi Oh event is this? There's Sky Striker. Um, it failed to convert. And there's still some Sky Striker tr uh, Orcus decks, one of which is on screen right now. The uh, one pure sty uh, Sky Striker did not convert. Yep. Unfortunate. And the Striker Draco as well. Oh, that was the feature match. Oh, we're going for the Allure! Blind see, Allure. One. One. Ooh. Oh, he Ooh. missed. Oh, I missed. That's not the end of the world. No, I mean, not, no. it's perfectly fine. And it's two cards you couldn't have activated anyway. The only risky part about this is if he doesn't OTK this turn, uh, Zero Boros is a card. Well, uh, there is an Abyss Dweller on Ivan's side of the field, but Babel kind of complicates things. Like you can't really Abyss Dweller as profitably as you would be able to otherwise. Correct. Yeah, this this doesn't seem like um, enough to win the game on its own. It's going to go for a Magister now. Oh, okay. I think that's the search off of the Abductor. The abductor. Ivan was telling me how much he really values Magister, and he feels that people should really value it more. Magister is extremely slept on. Just because of the quick effect ability that it has. Mm -hmm. And we know that Ivan's extremely deep on the Endymion cards. He's playing, for example, Reflector. All right, we've got a board. Are we going to go to combat? I actually kind of respect not going to combat, honestly. Oh, so Isaiah Gizmag. did have the Gizmag, excuse me. If we don't, like, if we don't go to combat, then that uh, Dengirsu stays on the field, and he has to do something with it in order to activate its effect. <laughs> and it looks like he's negating it with the um, the Jackal King. I like this because yeah, I like it too. Yeah. There's a very high likelihood that that Jackal King is going to accrue more counters. So, like, that's just almost like a free negation. We're just talking real quick about where the spell counters are and where they go. Yeah, I think he's showing that when he <laughs> played the Magister, that it, both of the cards got the counters. All right, and he passes it back. Love it. I actually really like this. So and then an Abyss Dweller at a time when you can't bring back the ding. It uh, looks like we are chaining this uh, copy of Gizmek. You could even Divine Strike this if you want. Yeah. I wouldn't feel too bad about it. <laughs> I Although, feel really good. I mean, at, at, would you waste the Divine Strike? I feel like you should just use your uh, Jackal King because Divine Strike can hit a wider... Does Jackal King have enough counters? There's one on Jackal King and one on Abdicator? That's two. Oh, well, there it is. There's, what, like four cards remaining in the deck for, for Orcist? <laughs> Divine Strike, though, can hit a wider variety of targets, so I feel like you want to use your more narrow uh, disruptors instead. Mm -hmm. uh, chat, that is three stacks. Looks like they're just checking something on the text of... Uh, yeah, Metaltron does Metatron. actually have an effect. Yeah, no one really knows that, but 
Importantly, it's also a Zephra. Yeah. All right. Looks like we are going to go for the Jackal King, as you predicted. Yeah. Makes the most sense. <laughs> Accidentally reveals an Afterburn is here, but uh, pretty dead card at this point in the game. Yeah. I don't really think it's going to matter too much. Isaiah's going to have a very uphill battle here if he wants to have any hope. Like, Dengus is not bad, but when all you have in Grave is, like, Wand. To those of you asking about battle, why go to battle phase, you know? Uh, if you go to battle phase, you put the Ding in the graveyard, then when you go to activate Abyss Dweller, they can bring back the Ding. Why even risk it? Just fire the Abyss Dweller during safety, and then again on your turn, and you can eat the Ding for free. <laughs> that face down has... <laughs> it, it's got to be I, something. I'm so curious to know what that is. We're going to attack over Abyss Dweller. Does he have any protection for it? Um. Wow, I Don't certainly think hope so. so. Ooh, all right. Well, that's pretty good. <laughs> that is quite strong. But again, Isaiah's very limited on resources here, and now the Zephra Metaltron's going to activate. And that Abyss Dweller's going back. We'll try it again next time. That's such a cool effect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And so here's an orchestrated return, tributing Ding Gear. So you don't good one. you don't see that very often. So Do it's good, but at the same time, um, you know, Isaiah's on like six cards in deck. I, I'm thinking about divine striking this, but I don't think I would. You get your uh, Jackal King more counters though, so now you have a exactly. monster negate. That's why I would absolutely. Well, let we've that activated go the Jackal King this turn on the Gizmo. Oh, that's true. Yes, so it's only a it's a hard once per turn. Magister's has a counter though, so Magister can actually summon Reflection at this point as another interrupt. Incredible. Yep. Doesn't it have to be on the field for the quick effect though? Oh, you're right. Yes, yes. I we got to find a way to get it on the field. Yeah. <laughs> oh, afterburner. Okay. Go for Metaltron. Seems fine. Definitely has more than three spells in grape at this point. Okay, we will banish Zephyr Providence. Uh, of course, Zephyr Metaltron is a Zephyr monster, and as a result, can be protected by that card. Mm -hmm. And this puts Magister up to two and Abductor up to three. And Jackal King up to probably 12 at this point. Yeah, it's just... Uh, we're going to game two. Yep, game two. The Grand Tournament of the Series is upon us as Season 2 comes to a close with the Pro Play Tour Invitational, where players will be playing for $25,000 in cash and prizes. Still not qualified? Last Chance Qualifiers will occur on Day 1 of our 3-day event and will fire every 8 players awarding a box in prizing and invites. Be ready to play a few, because LCQs are only $10. Saturday is day one of the main event with a top competitor playoff following on Sunday. Stick around for day three, where we will have team events as well as a variety of side events. For more information, visit ppgeventmanagement.com and come play with the pros. <laughs> All right. The real mirror match. He's so playing himself. Isaiah playing the Brass Bombard. Yes. yes. Everyone's favorite. Yes. Let's get some brass. Favorite. Let's get some brass bombards in the chat, everyone. How do we not have a brass bombard emote? I that's maybe that needs to be the next one. <laughs> yeah, uh, it'll be good until the ban list hits. Yep, and they ban brass bombard, of course. So going to Link Rebo, banish special summon Harp, going to Galatea, and guess what? You have full combo. Yeah, um, it's a great way to get extra Orcus out of your hand, and there's return a second way to get it out. So interesting, he's opting to go for a return here. Mm -hmm. So that tells me that Isaiah already has the Babel. All right, so we're discarding a ooh, simple skeleton. That is a stacked graveyard already. Going for a lure. It's going to banish. Uh, ooh, is that the second symbol? It is. Ooh, okay. Let's take That's a fine. quick look at Ivan's hand. We can just barely see it. And there goes the camera again. Again. <laughs> this time completely off the field. That's so funny. That's like the first time this has happened this whole weekend. Yeah. All right, fanning out the graveyard real quick. The camera struggles to capture Ivan's visage. Too powerful for mortal men. So now here we're going to grab Nightmare. Mm hmm. And uh, at this point, still standard Orcus combo. Just go ding. Reattach one of your materials, and you've got a you know pretty decent setup. We still haven't seen Babel yet, but I like I said, I assume he already has it if he s purposely searched. And I've been putting the Link Rebo back on the bottom. Remember, uh, that's important for question. Yeah. <laughs> can they just ban that card so that way we can rearrange our graveyard? No, and keep Parasite Parasite legal too. Yes, because I know you. Uh <laughs> I'm running Duel Links Weevil Burn. Uh, in is, that, is, that what, is that card actually used in Duel Links? Uh, yeah, but through a skill. Oh. I don't know if that's better or worse. 
much better. Oh, cool. uh, you, you don't have to sleeve it into your opponent's deck. Even in Duel Links, it has the problem, because you can put on sleeves and see when it's coming. That's hilarious. And it looks like we will be um, reattaching that copy of Harp Horror. Yep. Again, this is standard stuff. And uh, you see 12 minutes on the clock in the top left corner there. Uh, they probably have more time than that. I think we give them more time in top cut. We do, but more importantly, uh, there are no ties in top cut. Yes. So, so what ends up happening is uh, we use current phase to determine life points. And if there is not a clear winner, uh, it goes to three extra turns, zero, one, two, three. Then we check life points again. Then we keep doing it. So now Isaiah is going to go ahead and... Uh, Use that Nightmare Engrave to banish the Gizmex. So now he's got Gizmex Skeleton plus the IP. And here comes the engage. Ooh, engage. Okay. Okay. Still not dropping the Babel yet. Yeah. All right. There's Widow Anchor. I like this. Another layer of interruption where you can just go ahead, set the Anchor take something that Ivan plays, and then you can just link it off with Mascarena. Ivan's playing in a very explosive deck. The scenarios in which uh, Isaiah loses a game that he's going first are where he's able to pop off completely, uh, like he did last game. I maybe would consider going into a Trisbane of this game, but um, now that we have a more uh, cohesive idea of what he's playing. Going ahead and using Symbol Skeleton, resurrect the Galatea. Does he have the Crescendo too? Oh, wow. Uh, are we going to activate the Galatea effect? Wow, so he's actually not opting to Babel. Wow, that's that's rough. That's interesting. I don't know if we missed. Oh, no, because uh, he used the uh, Galatea effect to get a copy of uh, Orcus. The uh, return. return. Yeah. Did he really need uh, it in the graveyard that badly that he was willing not to play on his opponent's turn? I mean, without Babel, the only interruption is going to be... Whatever comes off of the IP Mascarena and a Crescendo, and I think that Ivan well, is more than prepared to play through and that. And a Widow Anchor that we know also exists. And the Widow Anchor uh, comes at a very specific time. You know, it can't be used right now. We have right. to pop the Mascarena first, and then we Widow Anchor. It seems like but, everything is telegraphed. But it's even more telegraphed because he has to use Crescendo before... First, before Mascarena. Yeah. <laughs> before we, like, um, like if Ivan uh, gets this Dark Room out and then goes to Battle Phase, he blanks the Crescendo. So you have to crescendo this copy of uh, Dark Worm. I figured it out. Which is only okay. He's playing Metaverse. Oh. Which he's not. <laughs> we, we actually do know that he's not. I, it's, it's interesting. It's Oh, chat's figured it out. Um, the ban list actually dropped uh, between matches, and now Babel is forbidden. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. Makes perfect sense. I yeah. love the dynamic ban list we have here <laughs> at the Pro Play Tour. Let's see what happens for Game 3, the emergency ban list that's of what, uh, Dark World. That's what happened during the uh, uh, deck check, actually. We yeah. informed the players that a ban list dropped. and 80% uh, <laughs> of them were DQ'd. Don't worry, chat. A ban list didn't drop. Yeah. Don't run to your YouTube channels. Yeah. Casters. Oh, I'll do that ban list reaction live <laughs> right now. Yeah. <laughs> So, Dark Worm, are we debating on the Dark Worm effect activation here? <laughs> Chat, Isaiah does not have Metaverse. Yes, we're looking at his deck list. The only trap card in his deck is a Crescendo. And we saw him search a Widow Anchor, so... Could be a Set Lancia. <laughs> well, looks like we're going to try and go to Battle Phase, and he has to let it resolve because there's a Crescendo set. Oh my God. And Mascarene is gone. So now <laughs> Ivan's just free to just slowly pick apart this board and then just set up one of his own, which, as we know, Pendulum can do very well. All we got to do is find a way to pop one spell card uh, while uh, not Pendulum summoning, and I feel like that's pretty easy to do if we have access to Endymion. Now, the one thing is we do not know which back row is the Crescendo. So there could be a 50-50 here, mm -hmm. unless you can find a way to clear both. Uh, depends on how uh, much you've been paying attention. Uh, we did see the Widow Anchor added the hand, and it's... Oh! So with the Twin Twisters, we thought that Isaiah was going to side in. It looks like he did, and oh, this could wow. be a huge setback for Ivan here. Wow, that's incredible. So now we know the last set card has got to be a Widow Anchor. Uh, if do it's a crescendo, ooh, if the last card in hand is a Widow Anchor and the set card's a crescendo, wow, that's heads up. Yeah. So we're setting Reflector, and we do have the Gate Zero in hand. Which is actually just going to go for another Master, <gasps> and there's Crescendo. Wow. 
on okay. the master. All right. Pretty strong. That was pretty nice. Now, uh, the rough part is um, Ivan does have free reign to pop off from this position. There's a Gizmec in the graveyard, but aside from that, you know, you can do your entire combo. Uh, Isaiah should be able to decimate any halfway decent board on the crackback, however, with a Crescendo in graveyard and a Gizmec in there as well. Wow. Chat's right. That was a galaxy brain play, keeping the uh, copy of Widow Anchor in hand. Now again, keep in mind, both these players have already played against each other once, so you have that. Oh, and wow. And wow. he goes He's to game three. Going to game three. Okay. Very, very heads up uh, from Ivan uh, conceding so early into a game that otherwise would be dragged out and potentially end him in a scenario where he has to compete in time. You know, he wants to be taking the first turn and he wants it to be very, very long. Still looking to earn your invite to the $10,000 cash prize Pro Play Tour Yu-Gi-Oh! Invitational on January 24th through 26th in Orlando, Florida? Well, why not attend a Pro Play Tour qualifier at your local game store? Participating stores can host PPT qualifiers with their official Pro Play Tour Store Challenge Kit. Interested in hosting a PPT qualifier of your own? Visit ppgeventmanagement.com to learn how your local game store can qualify to host Pro Play Tour qualifiers today. Now, for those of you who are watching live, again, keep in mind the clock in the top right is going to be a little bit off because they get more time in top cut. I believe 10 minutes. Is it an extra 10? I'm not sure how much we give them. Uh, it's 5 or 10. Yeah. But in any case, uh, so there's going to be uh, even more time after this, even if time gets called technically in the top left corner because mm -hmm. our timer is only set for 40 minutes. Right. Oh, we do, in fact, actually have a physical clock. Oh, um, do they? Between the three of us, uh, we have one brain cell. <laughs> and uh, Nim's using it. They have 10 minutes and 18 seconds remaining. So there's an extra seven in addition to our clock. Yeah. And they might have actually even started a little bit later than the rest of the field. So just because they're going to match. All right. There is a Servant S and there is an Oracle. Wow, or that's a strong start. Oracle leads to Zephra or uh, Zephra Providence, and then Providence can lead you into a Zephrath? No, you could really get anything. Um, I like Zephrath because then you can immediately activate Servant mm -hmm. and uh, play without fear of hand traps. Right. What, uh, what hand traps is Isaiah on? Is he even playing any? He's not even playing any. Lancia. <laughs> <laughs> Nibiru. Oh, that's pretty relevant. Thumb through the deck real quick. Ivan, you got to hurry up, dude. Yeah, they got time. All right, there's Zephrath. I and think the uh, standard pendulum Zephrath. combo probably takes about eight minutes. Mm -hmm. So, But he's got to get to his battle phase. Correct. Going straight for the Zephrath. Wow. Interesting. I like it. Must already have a Providence in hand, then. That's true. He could already have the Providence. That's fair. So we're going to send the Zephyr new. Mm -hmm. Get that set up for later to give us a Divine Strike. Oh, wow, the hand is all spells. Yep. <laughs> oh, wish I opened like this. A pendulum summon for one, two? Oh, no. That's rough. I don't think that's that bad. Yeah, it's I think it's not fine. terrible, but I, I guess it's uh, much better uh, when your end play is likely to be like Abyss Dweller plus uh, whatever card you're searching off of Servant. Oh, so we didn't have the Providence in the open. Interesting, okay. Uh, you must know something we don't. He's in top eight, so clearly. Or does Oracle only search monsters? That might, oh, that's that's actually it. Never mind. No, Oracle so searches anything. No, no, no. Oracle, I think, only searches monsters. Oh, Oracle. Ze Providence. Providence only searches. Ha, ba, ba, ba. Yeah. That makes 100% sense now. We weren't being next leveled. No. Uh, we were just operating on a level far under the text of the cards. That's why we're commentating and they're playing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we were good, we'd be in their seat. All right, so Servant's going to come down here. He's going to go ahead and grab himself the uh, Jackal King, I presume, just to go ahead and shield himself from any sort of Nibiru shenanigans, which uh, we do know that Isaiah does play. Yeah. So if we go to Jackal King, um, and then we uh, link off this Servant and this uh, Zephyr, uh, Zephyr New, new um, find a way to get a four onto our side of the field, or get oh, really one other material for anything. I mean, that's an Abyss Dweller, which is probably good. There's that. You can Electromite, I'm pretty uh -oh. sure. Uh oh. Uh oh. We're going to Blind Allure. Good Here luck. Go. Let's see. He missed the last one. He missed, oh, this, one he missed too. this one too. 
Oh, that was a yikes. servant and I think a spell power mastery. Oh, that would have been a good one. Now, this is still fine. Let's see a second blind alert. The thing is, he can make Electromite and just get Lechery directly, can't he? Yeah. If, again, if he's opting to side it here. If nothing else, uh, this preserves um, counters on Jackal King uh, pre-Nibiru, you know? Like, uh, on your fourth summon, you don't have enough for Jackal King, so you fire off an alert to mill two cards from the top of your deck and insulate you against any type of big rock that's coming towards your face. All right, and have we used our normal summon this turn? We have not. We have not. We've oh, used the pendulum summon. He's going to send Dark Worm. Okay, that's fine. So if we'd like, we could pop Zephrath to return Dark Worm. Get a draw. You can pop still get Oracle your... Oracle, too. Yeah, we've yeah, seen that before. Zephrath. Yeah. I think the draw is fine here. Yeah, chat's right. Uh, in order for Lechery to fire, you need an Amorphage on the field. Which is a bit of Ooh, a tall order. That's a bit of a tall order, yeah. That's why you don't see it everywhere. I mean, a spell negator? I think that would be pretty good. I mean, if we can win you the game. Yeah. So we're going to get gate zero. I honestly think uh, Overlay for Abyss Dweller, Jackal King, Electromite is not a terrible board. That honestly might just be enough. Yeah. Uh, and you have Divine Strike. Divine Strike. So you have Divine Strike to back that up, too. Uh, does Divine Strike... You have to control a Zephyr card? No, you just have to shuffle one from your uh, oh. extra deck into the... Hey, we've got him. Yep. An allure, and this time, of course, we have material. Yes, because the, the gate, gate zero, zero that you searched. Yep. Uh, we don't see it, but I'm pretty sure that's the one. Ooh, a couple of spell cards. Yeah, right. Expensive deck. He's actually only playing 60 cards because it is 20 more cards doubling out. <laughs> Here comes Master. It's going to keep pumping up the Jackal King with spell counters. Yeah, you've got as many negates as you want here. <laughs> I'm putting it on Abductor's uh, up Abductor to three too. now. Are we going to see the monster effect of Abductor? <laughs> That's something you don't see very often. It's, it's never really relevant. All right, we've got five minutes remaining. So, whoa. He's activating We're using the effect, the effect of Endymion? Why? Oh my goodness. Is he trying to get, is he just trying to get the Endymion on the board? That's a pretty reasonable way to fiend another negate, but whoa. He's going all in on this particular board. It's not really all in, though. I mean, well, I mean, yeah. It's all the, in there because there's the, no scales. Right. Up to that many cards on the field. Yeah. Um, if it says up to, that's fine because you can just choose none. <laughs> yeah, and I think likely he's going to. He might be asking the judge really quick. So you've got the Divine Strike. You've likely got the Abyss Dweller. you got the Jackal King. You've got the Jackal King. You've got the Endymion. That should be more than enough. Yeah, it seems pretty good. I think the yeah, soldiers can... Yeah, right. You have to destroy at least one, but the field spell isn't a big deal. And here comes Dweller. It does not specify at least one, to those of you in chat. And Ivan just going to set the rest of his hand. This seems pretty Jackal King good. Jackal has two counters. That's four. <laughs> the Jackal King has nine counters.
All right, Isaiah's looking at the grip. Can he out this board? I mean, it's not terrible. And you'll notice that Ivan is not uh, going to shotgun this uh, Bistola playing around in permanence here. Yeah, which is funny because uh, Isaiah doesn't even play it. <laughs> Starting with the Babel, I like this. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to see the Dweller come down, which is fine. Uh, Widow, Widow Anchor, anchor the dweller. for the Dweller. Do we Divine Strike this? I Ooh. think we might. I, I, dweller resolving. Just so it's strong. so strong. That's a tough one. I, I would. Oh, is he going to activate Endymion? Bouncing Jackal King. Wow. wow. He's going all in on this. <laughs> I love it. There's a return. Okay, let's find those sideboard cards. He's He got rid of a Nightmare. He's going to let that resolve. Basically, Pot of Greed. Man, if he hadn't already found the Babel, this would be a completely different game. But he did. Oh, man, this is so tense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm having a rough time dealing. All right, Isaiah's looking at the hand. I mean, and he's, still got, he's still got a full there's grip. There's 30 seconds left. Uh, he's got to figure out a way to deal damage here. Well, that's assuming he wants to... I mean, granted, there's still going to be turns mm -hmm. if it gets to that point. Obviously, I don't think he wants that. If he can close it out right here, but there's some big bodies on the board. Yeah. Uh, he's got to figure out a way to attack. Uh, ugh. Engage, is that worth a Divine Strike? That's tough. I see he still has like four cards in hand. He's going to let it go. <laughs> I suppose that's fine. No fear, Shakespeare, this Dweller in attack position. <laughs> the only thing that really matters here, like Drones is the only like real... Well, he plays Afterburner, and we've seen him play Afterburner, but he's going to yeah. go for Drones. Yeah. Now, uh, is this he trying to go for Hayate? Uh, does he play Hayate? Uh, he plays Shizuku and Kag. So, no. Okay, no. So, he can go... The Kagari goes to, what, 18? Uh, with three spells. It? Well, this is going to we be can good, though. Negate it. He can go for Kagari here to get to try to add back Engage, to try to go for uh, Engage plus a draw. I can't imagine the Kagari resolves. Well, Let's see, so... And he's thinking about it. Come on, dude. Fire it. Divine Strike's the only monster you get that Ivan has left. Yeah. Yep, and that's going to prompt Divine Strike. Okay. Okay, I mean, do you have a way to deal with this? And the Shark Cannon. Mm -hmm. He has three spells. And there is a servant and a dark worm in the graveyard. The dark worm has enough attack points to get over Abyss Dweller. It does. Interesting that he picks servant. Monster reborn on Ooh, the nightmare. That's a that's way a to get nice Galate. extender, yeah. And you haven't used Nightmare's effect yet. It's not pretty, but it does the job. Uh, please put that servant in the right graveyard. Oh, be careful. Oh. I think he just realized that the uh, <laughs> the servant wasn't in there. And uh, Nims just confirmed they have two more minutes here. Well, if they have two minutes, I, I failed to see how Isaiah would ever fail to win this one. Uh, Ivan goes down 100 here, and uh, then he has to figure out a way to win game three. No, this is game three. Oh, so it is. Yeah. Dwellers down. I, I I missed the uh the lightning fast game one. <laughs> Ooh, Ivan wow. takes a hundred. Is this really what's gonna come down to? How upsetting! That attack position dweller. Oh no! Isaiah trying to figure out what to send with Dingirsu here. Gonna send the electromite. the electromite. Electromite hits the graveyard and, and he passes, passes it back. Turn. 
I think Ivan's going to try uh, to play Ivan, lightning you've fast to here. Figure out something. Um, it's going to be hard though. I mean, Isaiah has the entire graveyard well, to work with. Wait, can Endymion just attack Dingirsu? Well, well, no. There's a nightmare grave. He can't. Yeah, exactly. Because if he'll Endymion just goes in to attack Dingirsu, we activate the effect of nightmare yep, orchestra in the graveyard. Yep. And then we walk away with it. So he needs to hurry and find a way just to clear that. I mean, he's got under one minute for sure. Whatever he's doing, he's got to do it really quick. <laughs> he looks real quick. Uh, that's the wrong one. Yeah. So Ghost versus Fraxiton doesn't really do... I mean, yes, you can force the Babel here, but... Okay, into the void fires. Is it going to be enough? Says, okay, sure. Take your draw. What's in the hand? It's, it's got to be good. It's got to be something. Uh, this is oh my God. so tense. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also like dead silent in the room now. Yeah. So we're trying to be like extra quiet because I think because a lot of people have uh, left, our voice would probably carry... All the way over there. Yeah, they're on the opposite side of the room, but if we got really excited, they would probably hear everything. And inform Isaiah that the entire hand is Nibiru. Yeah. So the Fraxiton scale goes Jackal King scale. Okay. We're getting Nui back here? He's got yeah, it. Yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah. Pendulum for one. And Isaiah says, yeah, okay. You can activate the effect of Nui. Go for it. Grab another Oracle. Wow. What other targets does he have? Not a ton. I'm so excited to see where this goes. Like, <laughs> I mean, wherever it goes, it's got to go somewhere pretty fast. So, Tribute Summons for Jackal King. Are we making it to Battle Phase? Wait, if he can get to battle phase, so if he can get spell counters on the Jackal King, he can... Negate the grave effect of yes. Nightmare. Yes! Yeah, that's a pretty good way to figure this one out. But that's if... That's if... It's a big if. It's a big if, because if Isaiah sees a spell, he can immediately just chain the Nightmare in response, and then that means that he'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Alright, we are doing this. Looks like we are in battle phase. Uh, he let it go! Does Isaiah take it? Is that 200? What? No way. What did we miss? There's no way. Was this pre-combat? Or no, are we... So he attacked. Yeah. So now we use another copy of Zephyr to grab the Zephyr Thuban... I, I, I am so, I am speechless. <laughs> so it was like, if you activate the effect of Nightmare Orcus, then you can remove the counters from Endymion with Jackal King in order to negate the effect, so he just uh, decided not to? Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, they're looking at it right now. All right, and Isaiah is drawing for turn. What? Uh, this is so. This We're is so crazy. Special pank. How have they? Are they in turns right now? Oh, we may have missed them getting to turns. That would explain they, why they're playing like this. Yeah, they have to be in turns. There's no way. So Pankratops is going to <laughs> attack into the <laughs> Endymion, and now that there's no monster negate on the field, we can use the Grave Effect of Nightmare Orc as yep. a damage step. And we can pump it. Uh, Ding, Ding attacked over the uh, the Jackal King, correct? Yep, for okay. 200. Yeah. yeah, so now we're going to damage step. Uh, I believe we'll probably send a Gizmek here. Just anything, just to give it a... It doesn't have to send anything big. Mm -hmm. He's able to easily hit over this. He's going to send Harp. Harp will put Pankratops of 3k, which uh, Master is 28. Yep, correct. Yeah. 
So that'll be enough. That'll be another uh, 200. I can't believe this like slow chip away at the life points. Yeah, it's been working. We can use Harpoor here if you want. Get in a cool 1200 with something like a simple skeleton. Uh, to those of you asking in chat, um, end of match procedures are different here. Um, if there's no clear winner uh, after time expires, uh, it goes to uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 in terms of turns. Just shuffling real quick, looking for a relevant target here. God, this is so tense. I can't yeah. believe the life point holes are this close. And for those of you who are curious, we're having to whisper because, it, like I said, our voice can actually carry pretty far. Yeah. Since they're, the entire room has just about cleared out at this point. <gasps> Spellbook? That's Excuse Spellbook me? of Secrets. Okay. That's a way to get some spell counters up. I guess so. <laughs> um... What what's the uh, what's the other purpose? All right, we're, we're gonna go harp. for a harp. Yep. Get ourselves something relevant. A uh, symbol. It is. symbol. Oh, come fine. on, go to attack position. Do it in battle phase. Deal twelve hundred. <laughs> I think he's thinking about just making another Galate here. And uh, that uh, that spellbook of secrets for those of you wondering was searched off the uh, master endymion effect, which was killed in battle, which never happens. Yeah, you for people forget that this effect exists, but uh, master endymion yeah. has an incredibly powerful search effect when he's destroyed by battle. Yeah, you search any spell in your deck seems pretty good. Uh, speaking of searching from your deck, uh, IP Masquerina plus a crescendo kind of feels like lights oh, out. And pancrotops. Yeah, we got pancrotops. We could pop That's a spell, so prevent rough. it from ever getting scales. We could go into a unicorn to tuck whatever we want. I mean, things are looking very grim for Ivan. Yeah, this is... The the writing might be on the wall here. What a match, though. Yeah. Ton of back and forth. Like, I can't believe that slow grind in this game three, and now here we are. Isaiah essentially just set up, like, the traditional Orcus combo after, like... About to win with 300 extra life well, points. Yeah, with 300 life. Mm-hmm. And this is what, like, turn five, six? I'm sure this is either the last turn or extremely close. Yes. I don't think Ivan is going to get two battle phases. I don't here. think so either. I'm pretty sh I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I think this has to be the last turn. And this is basically Isaiah's last stand at this point. If Ivan can somehow pull this off, I'm going to be in shock. All right, there's the Dark Worm. Yep. Looking real quick at the graveyard, I think we're probably okay with that. Is we go Secrets? If you're Isaiah, what do you do here? Is this worth your time? I don't know. What's the, what do you get off of Secrets? What, is his, scary at what all? is his target for it? He plays knowledge, mastery, and knowledge. No, mastery's not a spell book. <laughs> oh, I, it's, he's it's, listed it's it right after correct secrets. Correct. So yeah. it goes secrets, mastery, knowledge. He plays three secrets for the one master. He has to play the magician, too. There's no way he just plays it for one knowledge. Blue boy? No, he's not playing it. He's not playing blue boy either? Wow. Oh, he is. He's playing exactly one. Okay. That I can get behind. Wait. Is he? Yeah, he is. Okay. I can't. So looks like he's searched Blue Boy. I can't believe how close this is. We're going to battle phase. Um, obviously Isaiah is not going to let this resolve. Yeah, uh, there's. He has to. So let's link summon. Uh, you're forced to. Yeah. I think Isaiah is just making sure he knows what the turns are. Yeah. So he's gonna. M oh, it looks like he took it. What? I am shooketh. Again, like we. 
we're still a bit confused as what the turns are. You know, if, if Isaiah has last battle phase, then that makes sense. All right, so... A pendulum summon. Of blue boy. Of blue boy, yes, because he normaled the dark worm, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is going to allow him to get knowledge. Oh, he already had the knowledge. Oh, that explains it. He's then going to pop the blue boy. Oh, don't do that. That's so painful. Oh, I think I haven't shotgunned it too quickly. Oh, wait, hold up. Chat's right. He can't pendulum summon. Oh. Let's see if we can catch that real quick. Unless there's something we're missing. It could have been a pendulum summon of the dark worm and then oh. a summon oh, that's of the true. blue boy. Okay. Uh, but either way, you know, he can't perform a pendulum summon unless a Fraxion on his side of the field. Ooh. Oh, okay. 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 Dark worm from grave, blue boy normaled. I'm just making sure. Never hurts to check. And here's okay. the pendulum summon. There we go. That's the pendulum summon, yeah. Yep. God, this is just crazy. Oh, it's so tense. It's, it's so close. All right, so it looks so like we're going yeah, for Providence so here. Providence. All right, we've got to find a way to get this blue boy off the field or else we're just dead to the attack. Yeah, and losing that knowledge, like, you're forced to link here. The crescendo's still live, too, and you don't have your battle phase anymore. There's, uh, he's looking at the Providence. I don't know if he has really any valuable targets remaining. I'm not sure. Is there anything? Can we see? Like, you uh, you can make a unicorn, but then unicorn loses to Crescendo. Yeah. He doesn't have, like, a lot of targets. Yeah, just looking at his extra deck here, there's really nothing he can go into. <laughs> He's kind of smiling, looking at the extra and going, oh, great, now I have a blue boy in attack position. God, that's so rough. It is not great. <laughs> Passes turn. Oh, no. All right, well, Isaiah, so let's see if we can uh, wrap this one up. We thought that was the last turn. <laughs> Isaiah raises his eyebrows. Oh, really? Well, you're just going to let me attack? Yeah, um, that's something I'm interested in. All right, Orca's return, return for Nightmare. Oof, and it's the damage step increaser. Wow, Nightmare and Graveyard. So you have Crescendo to protect pretty much anything you do here. Ivan's not presenting anything threatening on the board right now. Yeah. So if you're Isaiah, you pretty much have free range to do whatever you want, and... I think Isaiah's going to walk away with this. What a game. Yeah. Like, what a game. And, of course, just going over everything here, uh, the last thing you want is to miss an onboard interaction and right. accidentally lose. But, I mean, I don't see an onboard interaction. Taking a quick look at the extra. Oh, I wish we knew what turn they were in. I know. Because I would just, like, it's it's hard to say and, like, figure out what the correct line is when the turn count is. Okay, so here we go. We see uh, Harp getting banished. Mm -hmm. Again, Isaiah can just clean up this board so easily. Mm-hmm. Going for the Brass, so that obviously telegraphs that there's another Orcus in hand that he wants to take advantage of. Here comes sure. Link Karibo. There's Brass Bombard. Banish Brass for the Skeleton Simple in skeleton. Hand. Oh, wow. This this should be it. This has to be, right? Turn two of three. Okay. Thank you, Nim Nim. Going to set another copy of Orchestra to return. I don't think it matters at this point. Because at this point, I think you can just Boral Sword with Dingirsu, and that should be more than enough. I mean, all you've got to do is figure out a way to lethal against a very, very impotent board. 
Looking at the four real quick, and uh, there's the boy. Yep, there it is. This is just one of the reasons why this deck is so powerful. Just this combo alone and the ease of which you're able to assemble it. Uh, leaving one Link 2 on field uh, just absolutely decimates your ability to play. And uh, one Portal Sword is more than often more than enough. All right. There's the ding. We'll activate it. I imagine you just send yeah you Zephyr send the Zephyr because it's in defense mode. Everything else is going to get damage, and this should be lethal. Yeah. Well, um, actually. All right. Well, into he's the dark worm. Yeah. So that's three k. Mm -hmm. So portal swords on thirty nine. Yep. Uh, we'll go um into the blue boy. That's twenty one. And then he and says, "So what? Can I switch this to defense position and wrap it up?" I feel like that's it. And yeah. that's it. Wow. wow. Isaiah is your oh, champion. Oh, my God. Incredible. He'll advance. Well, he's, not, he's not your champion yet. Well, you know. <laughs> champion um, of I'm, that game. I'm giving perhaps. it away. Wow. The entire event is scripted, folks. That <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, wow. That was such an such intense back game. and forth. Yeah, like we were like at the edge of our seats, just like. Intensely concentrating, truthfully. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just every move there mattered and you could pinpoint like maybe a few certain instances like maybe when uh maybe when ivan bounced that jackal king back like yeah, he should have maybe bounced the endymion got right, some counters on it yeah <laughs> like there's there's i think both of these players even though isaiah won i think both these players are gonna be going back looking at how they could have done things differently to maybe get to the result that it did this is a match yeah where I, almost every game was winnable for I, both of i them. think that game three was either player's game and if i recall did Ivan go first that game? Yeah, he went first game three. Yeah. It was so his to lose. That's just, that's incredible. Yeah. But, um, yeah, um, I don't think we're going to do a player interview because I think top four is just yeah, waiting. We're just ready to go. Yeah. And uh, that's going to be it for me. Yeah. I'll be passing it off to uh, the one, the only uh, Nimim, uh, who is uh, waiting in the wings um, to uh, steal my headset. Yeah, so uh, we'll be right back with uh, top four really quick. Do not go anywhere because it's going to be hype.